Give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Lift your hands to your God and declare His greatness. Come on, go ahead and declare God's greatness. He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hordes in secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of you, who called you by your name. That word hordes means abundance, it means funded, it means God is calling the places, even the dark places. He said, I'm going to put my word in your mouth even though you didn't know me. I'm going to cause you to speak on my behalf even though you don't know me. So that the nations may know that I am the Lord. So the nations may know that I am God. I'll cause nations to pour out to you. God said, I've anointed you, Cyrus. Cyrus was a king God anointed. And he took over a great deal of territory. He really brought a revolution and a revelation to nations. And God anointed him to subdue kings. He used him to set Israel free. And he said, God said, I'm for you, I'm with you because you're working for me. You're on my behalf. And he said, I've anointed you so you'll open gates that will never be shut again. I've anointed you so the gates will remain open. That's what God is doing today. God is anointed. Whether they know it or not, all nations, those that know him, those that do not know him. Ezekiel prophesied and said, this is the word. This is what God says, declares the sovereign Lord. He said, either listen and hear or do not hear. But the word said, they that have an ear. The revelation of God, they that have an ear. Those that have an ear. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to His body. Heaven is sowing earth today. Heaven is sowing its seed in the earth today. Heaven is sowing its seed. I want to allow you to take your seats, but I want you to stay standing in your spirit. It's time to stand up so we can stand out. Heaven is sowing the earth because the earth is the only place that God created that can reveal the intentions of God. The Word says the fullness of God. And the Scriptures say this. It says the mystery, the mystery, the mystery, the mystery, not a mystery, but the mystery, is Christ within you. What is the great mystery? Christ within you. Christ within you. All the hidden treasures of knowledge and wisdom are in Christ. And the Word says, if Christ be in you, if you are Christ, then the hidden treasures of God are revealed. This is that time. This is the latter day of the revealing of God's heaven. This is the, this is the word of Christ. Here's what, how I want you to pray. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. I want you to think deeply about this. The mystery, the mystery, the mystery, all the mystery of heaven, the mystery of God, is Christ within you. That's the hope of glory. Christ being revealed in you is the hope of glory. And what a phenomenal thing. Why would God, as the scriptures say, what, what is man? What is the earth that you are so mindful of it? What is it? Heaven knew there was a mystery when God said, us, said let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Let us create you. There is a value. There is a worth to God's providence in your life, God's will, God's purpose in your life that is so far beyond anything you've ever failed in or anything you didn't do that you wished you had have done or anything you wish you hadn't done. The prevailing power is always the will of God. The prevailing authority is always the will of God. And what that means is they that have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying are going to represent the biggest move of God that the world has ever known. Not a move, not a revival, not a breakout, 
but the greatest move. Heaven is taking over the earth. Heaven is being revealed in the earth. And those that will not anticipate a waiting period, but will say of the Lord, this is the day that God has made. What always moved Christ was when no one waited. Anyone that wanted to touch heaven just did it right here and right now. The moment didn't have to feel right. There didn't have to be anyone around applauding them or encouraging them. They just had a revelation. And the revelation, the spirit of prophecy, is all about revealing who Christ is. The word calls Christ the seed. It literally says, until the seed comes. What were we waiting for? We were waiting for a seed to be planted in the only place that seeds grow, in the earth. This is the only place that things transform. Heaven is illuminated with the glory of God, but heaven saw fit, God saw fit to create an earth, and out of that earth, to pull out of the in seemingly insignificance of what the earth is, just dust, and form and shape human beings, humus, us, out of the earth. And the host of heaven was saying, what is this that you are so mindful of him in all the grandeur and all the glory of heaven? What is it? And what is it about today? What can we look forward to seeing? What is God saying? What is the Spirit of the Lord saying? What is the prophetic word for today? Are you ready? Are you in for a takeover? Are you ready to make a sound? Beyond any sound. God said to Cyrus. God said to Cyrus. Not a Jew. God said to Cyrus. He said I'm going to anoint you. I have anointed you. And I'm going to use you to set my people free. Do you know what that says? There is no weapon. There is no power. There is no idea. There is no government. There are no laws. There are no rules. There are no restrictions. There are no people that can hamper the work and the will of the Father, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist on this planet. It doesn't exist in the heavens. It is non-existent. When God has called you, as He says, I have called you by your name, know that something extraordinary is going to take place in regard to who you are. What are you that God is so mindful of you? And the power of these revelations are when we take it very personal. As Bartimaeus did, I take it very personal. As the centurion said, I take it very personal. Think of the confidence a man has when he knows he's standing there before the greatest, in their mind, the greatest prophet. Some revealed the Son of God and he has the power to answer the prayer that you need answered right now or death waits on the other side. And he says this, he says, speak the word only. Just say it, but do it right here, do it right now. A woman who's dying, she's bleeding to death and she says right here, right now, all I'm going to do, I'm not asking for anybody permission. I'm not waiting for a special time. I'm not waiting till I catch him alone in the middle of a crowd. What is unlawful I'm about to do because my faith and my revelation has overcome all time, all seasons, all borders, all boundaries. And God is saying to me by His Spirit, this is the moment. It's the this is the moment generation that say this is the time. There's nothing to wait for. There's nothing holding me back. There's nothing telling me that matters. I can't. There's no law. There's no standard. There's no chain. There's no bar. There's no prison. There isn't anything. Nothing exists that can keep me out of the perfect, powerful will of God. And then Jesus said this. He said, when the Comforter, the Holy Spirit comes, what He's going to do is He's going to nudge your heart. He's going to push you in directions where you need Him. And if you get upset when He does that, then that means that you didn't hear the Word. God is proving the earth today because the earth is about to bear forth, to spring forth, something we have never seen before, just like the Scriptures say. Jesus said, I'm choosing and I've chosen a people. Before you knew how to breathe, before you knew how to speak, David said it like this. He said, 
God knew me while I was in my mother's womb, before I could do anything, before I could make any choice. God says, I've chosen my people. He says, I've chosen the vessels, some for destruction and some for good works. Can you look at God and say, why have you done what you have done? But how is God proving the earth? And what's going to happen? A takeover is going to happen, just as happened with King Cyrus. Because God's anointing rests on a generation that can do one thing. And God reveals it in Revelations to John. He that has an ear, those that have an ear, those that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the body. God revealed it to me. He revealed something powerful to me that changed my life when He said, just say it and don't look at their faces. Because of the lights, I can't see your faces anyway. But he said, don't look at their faces. I want you to speak to their spirits, just as God did. And God said, I called out my chosen. God has his chosen people. Yes, he does. Can we say to God, why did you do this? We just say, the Lord has done it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But to be able to say, yes, Lord. To be able to say, speak to me, God. To have a heart to want to hear the word says something incredible about you. It says God has chosen you. And God is proving the earth, God is proving the seed that he's chosen. He's proving the soil that he's chosen. We're called the planting of the Lord. There's a unifying between heaven and earth. And this is what God's saying. I'm about to do something that's going to disrupt every nation on the planet. The pandemic that we just experienced was but a drop in the bucket in comparison to what the Holy Spirit of God is about to release in the earth. As people were running away and hiding, they're going to be coming out and running in. As people were shut out and shut in, as the anointing was on King Cyrus, so the anointing is on this generation. And God is saying, I'm going to send you out, and you're literally going to overcome the nations with the word, the spoken word of the living God, just exactly like Jesus did. And if you will, Jesus held the reins back a little bit. He said, I'm not going to reveal all. He said, I'm going to use you to do it, because I need this thing to grow in the earth. I need seed to grow. I need revelation to take root. I need a people who are called by my name to humble themselves. I need a generation that knows the power of repentance. I know I need a people that are not afraid to embark on the greatest crusade, the greatest revelation, the greatest outbreak of all time. And what has ever brought about those seasons in the earth? Someone with a revelation that says... The when is now. This is that time. God said, I will fund you. He said it back in the Old Testament. He said, I will cause them to fund you. I will give you hordes, treasures, hordes of treasures. That word hordes means it will fund you. It will take care of you. It will secure you. It will be poured out to you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. Well, what's so great is when God gives something, He engrafts it in us. He makes it a part of who we are, so we can't doubt who we are. We believe God. We stand in the order of His Word. God is proving the earth. The Word says, A sower went out to sow seed, and some fell by various on different soils. Some fell on the rock. Some was burned up by the sun. Some the birds took away. Some were in the midst of thorns. You can plant bad seed in good soil. Somebody say, oh yes. I'm prophesying to you today. I don't have to point my finger at you, although I'm doing it all day. I don't have to shout at you. Hey! Although I probably will. But he that has an ear, let him hear. How do you know? How do you know this? But those who were sown on good soil. How do you know your good soil? 
How, how is God proving the earth? He proved the earth when he created it. He proved it and he reached into the dust and he breathed into it and man became a living soul. Second Adam, the last Adam, became a living spirit. It's not two separate bodies. It's a body God intended to be one. Jesus said, I and you and you and me. He is the seed. He is called the seed. And the seed is called the word of God. And his name is called great and mighty. His vesture, his garment, his robe is dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And his name is called the word of God. Why and to whom are people going to yield over their increase? As God has done, this is not a new thing. But it's going to be new for this generation. Because there are corporate offices, corporate buildings, corporate people, corporate gatherings. And God is bringing the order because God is handpicking His chosen, just as He said He would. He said the tares were sown among the wheat. And God said, leave it alone, I've got this handled. The servant came and said, should we, should we rip the tares out? And God said, nope, this is exactly what I want. I knew the enemy was coming. I knew he was sowing tares. I didn't stop him. This is my will. You're going to see a dividing of nations. You're going to see a separation of people. But the wheat is going to stand out. God is raising up His Word. How do you know? How does God prove the soil? But some felt, and those that were sown on good soil are the ones who hear the Word and accept it and bear fruit. And then what happens is it goes to 30, to 60, and to 100-fold. In some areas, there's going to be a 30% over takeover. Other places, there's going to be a 60% takeover. In other arenas, 100% takeover. Yeah, we're talking takeover. We're talking exactly what God said. He said, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwell therein. When he led the children of Israel out of Egypt, there wasn't a handful that wondered whether or not God was with Israel. Everyone knew. Pharaoh knew. His sane army knew. They knew God was with them. God said it, and he said it over and over, and this is the revelation for this day. I'm doing what I'm doing so they know who all nations that I am the Lord that does it, and there is no other. And I am God who gives to you. God is proving the earth. How? By putting His Word in your mouth. The seed that is sown, the Word says is what? The Word of God. And who is the Word of God? Who is the Word of God? So Jesus has been sown in the earth. And Christ has been sown in you, I in you, and you in me. So God said this, I'm creating a place where I must be revealed because I cannot be seen in my fullness. I am God. There is no beginning and there is no end. Only the Spirit that is within you really knows who you are. And only the Spirit of God really knows who He is. No eye can show you. We've talked about this. No ear can tell here. No touch can, or senses can tell you it's God only by revelation by the Spirit of God. And in order for that to happen, there has to be a uniting between heaven and earth. Why earth? Because earth is the only place that seed grows. Earth is the place God created to plant something that when you look at it, you can't see all that it is. You can read on the package of a seed as to what it is, whether it's a watermelon or whatever it is. But you can't see it. You can hear about it, but you can't see it until it goes into the earth. God is a mystery. His kingdom is a mystery. No one in heaven or no one in earth can see it until that seed is planted. Heaven had no idea. They had heard it forever, ever since man fell. They had heard about the Savior. They had heard about the redemption of God. He's sitting there, the Word, 
and the Father. They didn't know who He was. They didn't know salvation. They didn't know redemption. They didn't know raising from the dead. They didn't know dead coming to life. It was non-existent. He is all the fullness, but it wasn't known until Christ came into the earth. He had to enter. The seed of God has to enter the earth in order to bear fruit of the fullness of the Father. And the Father's will is to be revealed. And as He is revealed, the territory begins to change. The ground begins to change. Your lives begin to change. Your influence begins to change. Your geometry, your geograph, everything begins to change. Everything about you, the land begins to change. When seed is sown in the soil, it isn't just the seed and the soil. It's the seed and the soil and the soil in the seed. They have to unite together in order for the seed to show what it is. It has to be that way. God orchestrated it. He made it. I am the Lord God. He says, I have created it this way. I have done this. I have made it so. We are in the most incredible season of our lives because the revelation of this word is being made manifest in the earth. God has taken the scriptures from the Old Testament, the latter rain. The former and the latter rain literally meant, represented exactly that. The former rain that came and the latter rain that came. It didn't necessarily have a spiritual significance except God created it that way. So we reach in by revelation, we look at the former, we look at the latter rain and we own it. We say the former things, those things which were, or those things which should have been and were not, will be. These all died in faith, never having received the promise. But to you, the promise was given. Which means there was something God wanted that a generation didn't see. But some generation came along and said, I'll take it. I'll receive that. And God always brings things out of the soil after it's been tilled a while. We are the tilling of the earth. We are the planting of the Lord that He may be glorified. But Christ was also the planting of the Lord. Why was He tempted? Why was He led up by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil? He makes it very clear. He says He was tempted. God, remember, God led Him out to be tempted and the Word says He was tempted so He can secure everyone that has ever been tempted. God didn't leave us a way out. He secured us from top to bottom, front to back, side to side. He secured you. In other words, God wants you to abandon every excuse you have for the greatness that He has called you to. God wants you to doubt failure. He wants you to doubt your weakness. He wants you to believe in the empowering of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to believe the you are significant as a piece of earth that God formed for His own pleasure. As a, the significance of His will that Christ would be sown in you. We haven't seen it all. And in comparison to what is about to take place, you haven't seen anything yet. Jesus said all these things, these weren't vain words. These were words of power that would become reputable words of reputation for His people. He said all these things you've seen me do. You've seen me heal the blind. You've seen me heal the lame, res the dead. You've heard the Father speak to me out of the heavens. He said all these things you've seen, you will do. But he said there's some things that are going to take place because the spirit that knows the heart of God is about to enter the earth. And when that seed enters the earth, things are going to grow out of it you would never have imagined. And that's who you are. Something you couldn't imagine. I will to do exceedingly. Far above and beyond all you know how to even ask for. How to think about. How to imagine. I will do it, says the Lord. And so how do we prove the earth? We're doing it today. The earth is proven by the seed. If it takes root, it's good soil. If it doesn't, it's not. What's happening today? God is putting His Word in your mouth. 
In the latter days, says God, your sons and your daughters, they're going to speak the word of the Lord. They're going to, he didn't say they're all going to be prophets or prophetess. He said in the latter day, there's an outpouring. The spirit of the living God is flowing over the borders of the earth. The oceans are giving way. The word says the oceans are going to roar. The earth is going to shake. The heavens are going to shake. We haven't seen any of that yet. We're about to. We're going to hear the heavens thunder. We're going to see the earth shake. The waters move at the voice of praise. We're going to gather together. We're going to begin to declare a thing. And that thing is going to be done before the doors are opened to let the people out. God is going to have brought something in. Before you can figure out how to do it, God's have already assigned people just as he assigned Cyrus to help you, to encourage you, to stand beside you. Why? So you will know and all nations will know, I am the Lord God. There is no other beside me. And so all the nations will know that I am the Lord with my chosen. I am the Lord with my people. He said, they'll not be able to deny, deny that I am God with you. Not only God with you, but that I am God inside of you. That I am God dwelling in you. I in you. John 15 says, and you in me. This is a different thing. This isn't just me coming in Christ. It isn't just coming, Christ coming in me. It's the soil and the seed becoming one. The seed goes into the soil and the soil begins to accommodate the seed. It moves over where it needs to. It gives way for the roots. And then it becomes part of the root system. And it begins to feed from the power that God has placed in it. God said, I have strengthened you. He said, I have equipped you so when the seed comes, you can fortify the word of the Lord. In other words, you'll bear witness that this is a seed of God. How are we going to discern the world? All we're going to do is throw out the seed. We just speak the word. Anointed of God, as God told Ezekiel, all I want you to do is just say it. Just say it. But I want you to have faith that you're speaking the word of the Lord. Ezekiel would declare things like this. The sovereign Lord God has said it. The almighty, all-powerful God has said it. As hard as you've contended for anything in your life, you're going to contend to be a witness for God. As much as you've tried to make people get your way and understand you, the Spirit of God is going to pour through. You're going to be more invested than you've ever been in seeing and hearing God speaking through you than you've ever done in having people listen to your ideas or what you wanted them to do or what you thought you could do together. God's saying this is who we are and this is what we're doing together in the earth. This is where the power is breaking out. This is where the seed is sown. God said, I have chosen it. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Why in the world would God invest the seed of heaven and plant it in the earth? Why would he do that? It's the only place that revelation will glow, grow. We are the redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And not only that, but when you step into the kingdom of God, every single redeemed person, heaven's going to look at you and go, Jesus. God Almighty, just like he did, just like they did when Jesus was born in the earth. A seed went into the earth and immediately revelation came out. They said, oh my God, literally, my God, we've never seen you like this before. We didn't know you. We know you're more than we could imagine, but we get to see a bit of who you are. He said, I'm going to give you a little bit of the hidden manna. I'm going to show you hidden treasures that have been stored up for generations. No hand can hold on to it. You think because their face is stern or their hand is strong, or their legs are tall that they can keep it out of your hands but all I've done is stored up my strength for you I have shown you the nations I'm showing you the land of Canaan I've shown you the voice of promise you are the planting of the Lord but you're also the soil of Christ when the first drop of blood touched the soil you're free That's where you came from. That's the body you are. Every sin, every sin was purged. The moment that his blood hit the soil. Sanctified. 
The Word of God was revealed. The Word of God was manifest. Heaven's eyes were opened to something they had never seen before. That's the chosen of God. There's the mystery of God. We never would have imagined it in the deepest recesses of our mind. And God says, I've assigned them to watch over you. I've assigned them to care for you. Why? They want to see the glory of God. And when does it come? When it is revealed. Not when it's looked at. Not when it's touched. Thomas, you believe because you've touched, you've seen. But blessed are those who have never seen and yet believe. They are the chosen of God. They are the anointed of the Lord. How is God proving the earth? All we do is sow the seed. He said the soil that is good receives the seed. They receive the word. Not only do they receive it, but they begin to produce fruit. Herein is my Father glorified that the seed grows, that fruit comes out of you. That the earth gives way for the sea. You give way for Christ. He said, surrender yourself to the mighty hand of God and watch what I'll do. Watch the nations come. Watch the nations worship. See, it takes believing that God is God to even believe this will happen because the natural mind says impossible. And God says, but I'm proving the soil. I'm proving the earth. I'm saying this is going to happen. Do you believe? I also said that the Savior was going to come and change heaven and earth. All the dynamics of all of creation was going to be transformed when this seed was sown in the earth you didn't know who he was you couldn't tell with your eye but when he was planted in the soil they said truly this was the son of God when the Holy Spirit began to reveal they said we know who you are you are the Christ you are the son of the living God hell backed up and said why have you come to torture us we know that when you're sown in the earth it's been prophesied that everything else ends for hell and heaven is glorified God is mad manifested in the earth and the sons of God are revealed they are the ones that show the mystery of who Christ is about Christ in you is the hope of glory Christ in you is the revealed mystery this is the greatest season of your life give the Lord a shout give the Lord a shout give the Lord a shout of praise lift your voice Go ahead and lift your hands. Bless His holy name. Nobody like you can compare with you. Great are you, O God, in the earth. And we glorify and we praise your name and we thank you for making us who we are. Christ within you, the hope of glory. It's a story, the revelation, interpretation, the fullness of the Father revealed in the sons and the daughters. God our Father, this is the day that God has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. This is the day that God has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Say, this is the day that God has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. This is the day that God has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. A new song is coming out of an old earth, a renewing. I will, God said, I will, I will, I will, I will to do a new thing. Before it, here it comes again, before it springs forth. Get a little spring, come on, stand with me. Before it springs forth. Say before it springs forth before it springs forth before it springs forth will I not tell you of it Isaiah 45 I am the Lord and there is no other beside me beside me there is no God I equip you Though you did not know me, great God the chosen, called not celebrated, filled with wisdom, illuminated, chosen by God Himself, that's who the redeemed are. That the people may know. From the rising of the sun, from the west, that there is none beside me. 
I am the Lord and there is no other. And if what's happening here in all that God is revealing and who, who are these people? I want to be. I've already told you. So the word. And in, I, in Ezekiel, God said, either they hear it or they don't. Makes my job so easy. Cheesy peasy. Nice and easy. Anointing makes it greasy. So it goes down smooth. Transforms you into who you're supposed to be. But you gotta believe. Yes, you gotta believe. Yes, you gotta believe. Yes, you gotta believe. Yes, you gotta believe. The song is coming out because the seed, the soil, is coming together. And old earth is being revived. He said, I'm going to do a reviving. What does that mean right here? This word is going to revive nations. This is not a word. This is the word of the living God. God is reviving the nations. The soil is going, wait a minute. I'm really excited about being soil. I'm excited about being the earth. Remember, you may not know it, but that's what the angels say. Man. How awesome it is to be earth. How awesome it is to have the prophetic breath of God that breathed in the first Adam and Eve to be breathing in the earth today. How prophetic is the Spirit of God that it continues to breathe generation after generation, nation after nation, people after people. This is that outbreak. And a new song comes because of revelation always. It's not that something changed and you looked at it and you went, oh, look what God did. It's when revelation comes and you say, look who Christ is in me and who I am in Christ. That's the seed breaking earth. That's the sun touching it. That's all the demographics and the geography changing and transforming. That's the earth shaking. That's the heavens moving. The seed is calling as Elijah was a voice for a day to come. Earth calling to the heavens and saying, let it rain. Let it rain. There will be an outpour. There will be a deluge from heaven. And God, God saying this, shower, O heavens, from above and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open its mouth and salvation and righteousness that they may bear fruit. Let the earth cause the thing that was sown in it to come out. I, the Lord, have created it that way. I did it on purpose. You are that seed of righteousness. Give the Lord a shout. Come on. Give, today. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout of praise. voice. Lift your hands. Bless His holy name. No more will they say the leading companies in the nation are unrighteous. But it will be said in the earth the leaders of nations are the believers in the one true and only God and His Christ. For the Lord will till the soil and the earth and the seed will be sown that says the earth is mine, says God, and I will bear witness that I am the Lord of the whole earth. All the cattle on a thousand hills are mine, says the Lord, and I will bear witness in this generation that my word is yes, and in me it is amen. Give the Lord a shout. 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 There was a time when they sought the Pharaoh's favor so they could have a better seat at the table because they weren't able. But this time, says the word of the Lord, the righteous will sit at the head of the table. And by the word of righteousness, all will come and 
and sat at the table and I will bear witness that I am the Lord of my people that I have not left you I have forsaken you I have never left nor forsaken you says the Lord but I am with you always I will keep you man has said they have forsaken them he is not strong in them but you will lift up your voice and say behold the glory of our God and of his Christ and the Lord will bear witness that he is God with us in strength and in power give the Lord a shout this moment give the Lord a shout this hour Give the Lord a shout. 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 A praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. I will cause the unbelieving nations to say we can't handle the revelation. Don't know what to do or where to go, what to say. As they walked through Egypt, says God, was it not my mighty hand that led the way? And yet they did not know how to stand or where to stay. But those that were under the cloud that day, I led them in the way. And they knew what to say. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is our deliverer. He is our God. He is the Lord who is with us. I will cause, says the Lord, such revelation to come into the nation. It will seem of confusion to those that do not believe. For the corner, cornerstone, has become that to them that say this is ridiculous. What can we do? And only by the word of revelation, says the Lord, will they be able to save their own businesses, their own fields, says God. They will not be able to establish their house except I, the Lord, watch over it. These are the days that you were walking into, says God. By revelation, they will be confused. For the carnal mind is not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can be, but you are not of this world. Therefore I give you to know and I give you to understand, says God, as I was with my disciples, says the Lord, and I spoke in parable, but when I spoke to them, they understood, for they had a heart to receive the word. So you receive, you stand with me, says God, for I stand with you. I am the Lord God that walks in you and through you and will declare through you, God is the God of heaven and you are my creation, my people, my holy nations. Give the Lord a shout at me. Come on. Shower down, O oh heavens, from above. Let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open. That's what God is saying today. That salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. All I do is throw the seed. I'm proving the soil. They that have an ear, let them hear who they are. And what God is saying to the church. Rise up, for your greatest days are before you. These are the hours of revelation. And the revelation is all about Jesus Christ. They that can reveal Christ. They that can testify to Christ. This is the season of prophecy. This is that spirit and that anointing that the Spirit of God is bearing witness that the Lord is in the midst of His people. Give the Lord a shout of praise. biggest forms of media, media outlets, will take away the commercials, some 30, some 60, some 100, Bold. and we will testify, and you will see your market increase as it has never increased before, says the Spirit of the Lord, for I am God that will show they that will humble themselves to me. I will lift them up and I will honor them, says God, if you will surrender to the word of the living Lord and say, He is Lord of all, in all, and through all. To Him be glory, honor, and praise. Give the Lord a shout. Come on. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Lift your voice. Lift your hands. We're pulling on heaven today. Now we give you praise. God, we bless your name. We give you praise, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. The favor of God 
is after you No doubt it's true The fear of God is after you No doubt it's true And all you gotta do is just stop And worship you. The favor of God Is after you There's no doubt It's true And worship. All you have to do is just stop and worship. Favoring down, hear, O heaven, the earth is opening up its mouth today. In this house we say, the Lord our God is with us. Let it be in these days as a day of Pentecost where the Spirit of the Lord flew into the house into the bodies, into the temple, into the tabernacle of the people, the building of the Lord. God, fill these people, everyone in the house and those that are viewing today and those that will view. Let your wind blow in them. Let the, the Spirit of God breathe in them the life of your word. Let us bear witness. Let us testify that the Ruach of God has breathed in His temple and we have been made alive again. Give the Lord a shout. is after you no doubt it's true all you have to do is just stop you know what to do worship him just 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 worship him mighty God you have formed these vessels of clay you have made us the perfect vessel for seed to grow Till the seed come. Who is this seed? Jesus. Who is the sower? God. What is the seed? The Word. Who is the Word? Jesus. 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 Nobody but Jesus. Jesus. The Word of God. Nobody but Jesus, Jesus, the Word of God. Nobody but Jesus, Jesus, the Word of God. Nobody but Jesus, Jesus, the Word of God. Nobody but they was after you. Say it. They was after me. Come on. They was after me. I'm the good soil, you see. So in me, the word of revelation. Say, favor is after me. No doubt, you see. Say it again. Come on. Come on. Come on. Favor is after me. No doubt, you see. And all I have to do is just stop. You know what to do. Worship Him. 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 All you got to do is just stop. Worship Him. Great God of heaven. Lord of lords, King of kings, Prince of peace, mighty God. All I have to do is sow the word. Just tell him, Anton. Just sow the word. Just say it. Don't wait. Don't wait for a response. Just sow the word. Sonny, just sow the word. Just say it. Rich, just sow the word. 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 Jerry, just sow the word. Sow the word. Sow the word. Sow the word. Donna, just sow the word. 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 Rob.
Robert, you stole the word. You stole the word. You stole the word. You stole the word. Crystal, you stole the word. 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 the words. Not what man would say. Not what people say. Not what the news says. What does Revelation say? What did God say to the woman? Just reach out and touch it. Just reach out and touch it. Just reach out and touch it. Bartimaeus, don't listen to the crowd. Just call it out. Just call it out. Just shout it out. Declare it. Say it. Just sow the word. Just sow the word. Just sow the word. It'll find good soil. Keep sowing the word. It's going to find good soil. Just sow the word. Just sow the word. Remember God said, they didn't, they didn't even know my name. And yet I prepared them just the same. They don't have to know your name. They don't have to know His name. But when you sow the word, it's still the same. What God said, He will surely bring to pass. And all He said is just, so the word, shout it. So the word, come on, Rick. Just so the word, Chris. Just so the word, just so the word, Alexi. If you will sow the word, nothing but the word, heaven will be heard in you. Just so the word, can it be that easy? Is that all? That's everything and more. Just sow the word. Alexi, sow the word. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Sow the word. 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 How did God save you? How did He change the world? How did He feed hell in the grave? How did He choose you to be the redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? How did He do all that He did to change everything around the world and in the heavens? How did He do it? For God so loved the world that He just sowed the Word. Just sowed the Word. For God so loved the world that He just sowed the Word. He just sowed the Word. So the word, it's a revelation. Here is your interpretation. I will honor my word, says the Lord God Almighty. Say a thing and it shall come to pass. And Jesus said, I've not seen so great a faith in all the land of Israel. Just so the word, you'll be heard. Just so the word. God will bring it to pass. Just sow the word. Come on. Just sow the word. Just sow the word. Just sow the word. Hear, O heavens, give ear, O earth, for the Lord God has spoken. We open up our mouth. We're not breathing hard and we're not choking. We just say what God has said is what we say. We don't hesitate. We say it right away. Thus says the word of the Lord. God has sown His seed in me. I sow it in the earth. Can't you see? And the Lord will bring to pass what He has shown me. Give the Lord a shout of praise. If you believe, say yeah. Come on, favor. The favor of the Lord is after you. The favor of the Lord is after you, no doubt it's true. And all you have to do is just stop. You know what to do? Worship Him. You know what to do? Worship Him. You know what to do? Worship Him. Worship Him. Marsha, sow the Word on the right and on the left. The Lord has chosen. The Lord has chosen. I make them lie.
like you. I'll make them love you. I'll make them favor you. I'll make them call you out first. I'll make them honor you. Because you have shown me, as you said, Lord, I will honor you as you honor me. This is the day that's coming on you. It begins today. This coming week. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Lord a shout. Lord a shout. A shout of praise. Lift your voice. Lift your hand. Bless his holy name. Come on. Give the Lord a shout. The Lord a shout. Give God a shout of praise. Lift your voice. Oh, worth give the Lord a shout of praise. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. Bless His holy name. Come on. Lord God Almighty. Lord of all the earth. Lord God Almighty. The earth is giving birth. Great God Almighty. Great God Almighty. All sovereign Lord, holy God. Prince of peace. Great is the Lord in the earth. Great is the Lord in the earth. Great is the Lord in the earth. He'll set you at the head of the table. But not so you can look so smart. He'll set you at the head of the table. As a Joseph in Pharaoh's court. So you can call to your beloved brother and so you can speak the word of the Lord. So favor pours out of you. And the less you're concerned about your table, the less you're mindful of your table, the more food there will be on your table. For I have given you to be the giving out of the Lord. He that has an ear, let him receive this word and shout praise be to our God. Give the Lord a shout. Come on. God Almighty, Lord of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, my Redeemer, let us shake heaven up together. Let's make heaven restless together. Let the angel of God that said to John, we're brothers together in this. We too are looking for the mystery, the revealing of Christ. You're the soil that Christ has been sown in. Worship God and let the glory of the Lord come forth out of this soil for whom the Lord has prepared the soil for the planting of the Lord. You are that soil. This is a great day. This is a day of harvest. This is a day just before the feast of the Lord. Give the Lord a shout. Praise, praise, praise to the Lord. The altar is open right now for your worship. In the spirit of worship, it's the greatest time. It's the best time to worship the Lord. Pour out your strength in your offering before God. Those that are in the house, those that are viewing, let's come together. Let's unite together at the altar today. Andrew, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I got the seed of God sown inside me. Christ in me, the hope of glory is living on the inside. And faith is running, running, running after me. Faith is running, running all around me. Faith is running, running, running after me. It's my, it's my destiny. Yeah, yeah. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the 
for the seed sown today. Seed sown in good soil. We hear the word. We receive it. We bear fruit immediately in our praise to our God, saying it is done. It is already taking root. It is already springing forth. The favor of God is pursuing me. The favor of God is pursuing me. It's so plain to see. No doubt it will be. It's obvious. Can't you see? All you have to do is just stop. All you have to do is just stop. I feel fire and worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Fires in this house. The Lord has called to you today. God has sown his seed in your heart. The Lord has made you his planting house. By planting his seed first. We are the seed of his seed. Thus we are the seed of Abraham. We are Israel. And Israel are they not who are of a tribe or of a descendant. But they who are Christ. Christ's seed. Christ's chosen. We are the Israel of God. The intended Israel, the chosen seed, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, all that believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the seed sown in the earth that today continues to spring forth from the earth 
whom the Lord has formed for himself, thus called the temple or the soil of the Holy Spirit, in whom the Lord brings forth the fullness of his fruit, who drink from the well that shall not run dry. The fruit will not abandon the vine nor the trees. We stand as a witness. The gates are open. And the Lord will keep open the gates for his name's sake. As the Lord said to King Cyrus, so the Lord speaks to a generation. He is the Lord God. He doesn't change. He is the Lord ever faithful. And all these things of all these generations past, were they not for your learning? To bear witness as to who God is, the God that never changes. And so in Christ we are that planting of prophecy. And Christ is that seed that dwells within us. We are the fruit of His favor. God, we give you praise today. Let us go out rejoicing, glorifying God, declaring this is the greatest season of our lives. You were dismissed. See you Wednesday. Go out with the prophetic shout.